Okay, Steve. <laughs> what? You're up. I'm up. You guys are up. Well, I was asked to report back to the city as far as uh, our airport concerns are, and, and basically they haven't changed, and, and uh, so I wanted to come over and visit with you guys a little bit more about uh, whether the county would still be interested or if there's any possibilities there with uh, county help or support. So I can report back to the city. It's, it's time to the September is the uh, deadline for applications for the next funding period, uh, which will be actually see this is 214, so it'd be 216. So it, it actually be for the 2016 funding because they award the uh, grants in July of the following year. So we're still looking at you know almost two years out from now. What's the next phase of? Four? Well, it's you know we basically the site selection and everything. They uh, they do do, do in-house engineering now, but you still you're still going to be required to work through an engineering firm like Lochner, who uh, did our original uh, studies and stuff. And uh, but a lot of the engineering they do in-house as far as the site, and then they want you to work through a, another engineering firm as far as drawing everything up in the plan. So it's it's actually. You know, probably the next phase would include uh, land acquisition, and, and, and you know, we, we've already got a bit of a jump start on it. Uh, the planning and stuff is, is pretty much done. The feasibility study, that's all done. So, so you're kind of getting to the the bigger money part next. And, and uh, I talked to tried to talk to George Lollaberti with KDOT this morning, and he's on vacation for about the next two weeks. I talked to the uh, actually the engineer there, and she said that he would be happy to come out and visit, or he would probably be happy to come out and visit with the county commissioners if they would decide that uh, they wanted to be more interested in looking into to the project. And uh, she didn't see any problem with that, but of course she's going to have to say for sure. But it'll be a couple of weeks before he can come out. Just kind of wanted to get some ideas. Uh, you know, you'd mentioned to me about the the port authority thing. Yeah, I, I, I don't, don't know. I don't know how that works. And what is the port authority? <laughs> <laughs> it's what I perceive it to be is we're doing a little. We're doing. We're being proactive. One by getting approval from the legislator to to have a port authority and. The second step is the board, and it's something that, in case something were to come, you know, because of Highway 50 and 281, the main line of the BNS net, we, if, if someone were to come in and say put in a, a siding to load out grain or whatever, we'll be able to act rather than say, oh, wait a minute. We've got we've got to establish a port authority. We've got to go through the legislator, legislators, and and have a board in place. So I think what we're doing is getting maybe a two-year head start in case something happens. Look, I think this airport deal fits into that because it's it's about any means of transportation to to a, a airport or. A, the Port Authority of Railway or Highways or Loading and Offloading and, and stuff, right? You know, and what caught Carolyn's, Carolyn Dunn's attention to this Port Authority has been the railway and the highways and then when I took her the feasibility study with the information you guys have shared with us from the airport, right? that really got the ball rolling. Uh, so I really think, I mean, I I feel there's interest. I want to be proactive with the airport, as we have been with Carolyn and the, the Port Authority, to be proactive and, and let's. Well, what the one reason somewhere. that I've been active in, about the airport is, um, first of all, if you don't have it, they won't come. Right. You know, and right now, you know, we're sitting in a position where the city of Stafford has an airport and we're not making any money on it, you know, and probably 
you know, well, never I will. The cities actually make money at airports. Right, and that's why I say we never will. But it's a service. A service. And the yeah. thing is, is um, the hospital being right there, you know, um, medical flights and that sort of thing. Uh, the other thing is, is we all know that, you know, Steve and I talked about, you know, 15, 20 years ago, there was hunting in Stafford County, but nothing like what there is today. Right. And we all know that there are a lot of people that are flying in to Pratt, Wichita, Great Bend. You know, there are people that would come here if we had something for them to do. And the thing that makes this so attractive is the fact that, you know, if we can go through the process and have somebody else pay for 90% of it. I mean, whenever you have somebody that's willing to pay 90% of a project, um, you know, how can you really say no or turn that down, you know? Especially since, you know, Stafford is a struggling county. You know, we only have so many people making so much money that have so much money for taxes and, you know, all the other things, you know? This might be a means to bring more activity to the area. So. But I think it does need to work hand in hand. You might even go visit with Carolyn because I think she could. She's been looking at that port authority for a long time. And we'll We're in the process of forming the board of the port authority. Uh, and I don't know. They they don't have the tax and power to do that. But they mm -hmm. they'll be a board of their own so to speak. Uh, Actually, they do have taxing authority, yeah. but the, uh, well, but it's got to be voted on by the citizens. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I like that part of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But well, we, we would have to have the people of the community behind us before right. we did something like that. Well, I know at an airport, if you formed an airport authority, they had taxing power too, but it's probably the same, same, same thing. thing. It's got to be passed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the two would work hand in hand together. I mean, we've had attorneys that wanted to fly into Stafford County. Well, I would never locate in Stafford County if they didn't have an airport, you know, this, this well, stuff like that. But I'll, I'll tell you a little story. I talked to David Newell and uh, about what we were doing. He's, he used to be, he was chief pilot for Vanity Fair and he's living back in Kansas City now. And, and he told me in 1963, uh, Fuller Brush came to the city council of Stafford and said we would like to locate at Stafford, our plant at Stafford. And if you would pave the runway for our corporate aircraft, we'll locate to Stafford. And they said no. So what would that have done for this county and the community? Yeah. So, that, I don't know. But that's not to say that something else can't happen yeah. for us, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was there was a perfect opportunity there that, that it's just, I, I don't know what they were thinking. I think so. Yeah. An example of the Port Authority is, is like the Cimarron on the short line. And all it is, is is a railroad where they collect the grain and send it on down. And I forget how many miles of track they have, but that's, you have the Port Authority. And it seems weird here we're out in the middle of the wheat fields and we're talking about port. And I, I'm always thinking water, but it's, it's like the, the you know, well, a lot of the, your truck, truck. Stops up and down the highway. Right, it's a port. You know, it's a, yeah, it's a port authority. Yeah. They have to stop and weigh and do stuff like that. And, and, and I think uh, Pratt has one. They very well. Not a port yeah. authority, but the, the airport authority. Mm -hmm. the, and we're located over there. You know, we're going to be between Santa Fe yeah. and Highway 50. Yeah. You're right there on two of your major. So. Is this something that the commissioners are wanting to pursue and, and look farther into, or? I mean, I, I've been asked by the city council, you know, to get a hold of Steve and, you know, it's time for us to figure out, do are we going to move forward or are we not? And we're going to be having a meeting and Steve's going to be at the meeting and we need to, maybe we need to have a meeting where we all come together and look at the pros and the cons and the good well, points I, and the bad I, points. I would like to know kind of what, what, you're expect, what the city's expecting out of the county for help and, and what we would do to move forward one way or the other. I like, don't know that know this... We've had, we've had our county attorney look into, you know, the, the joint venture of the airport, you know, when uh, Philip was here talking with us. Uh, 
years. And, and I know, you know, I, I, I think now we need to probably involve Carolyn and, and ourselves uh, on, as a port authority to uh, possibly see what joint ventures could happen with that. Right. And like I said, you know, I mean, the city already has an airport. I mean, we could leave things as they are, but that isn't going to move us forward. Right. And like I said, the 90% is very attractive, but there again, um, it's going to involve money, you know. And the city of Stafford <coughs> probably right now is not in the position. In, in the city could possibly look as, as donating the property to the authority as, as their part of it. You know, I mean, you're, there's monetary value there. Uh, and then, then the cash end of it there, and there, that would be why it would probably be good to talk to George. And if it, George could come out to a joint meeting, would even be better, you know, because he, he they work with cities and counties that work together all the time. They've seen both sides of it. Some like uh, Greensburg, the city had to do everything themselves because the county would didn't want a thing to do with it. And uh, so they've seen that side of it, and then they, they've also seen the, the joints and the, and the county doing everything itself. So they, they, they've seen it all. So and, is uh, the city going to pursue and, and submit the application the next step? Don't ahead? know. If, if somebody has to take the lead, somebody has to be the sponsor of the project, whether it's the city or the county or it would be an authority if, if that was developed, they said somebody has got to take, take the lead. Right. And right, right now, it'd be the city. It's the city the has, in the part. past, right. you know, the last couple of rounds, we have right. moved forward. Yeah, they basically have to have a sponsor for the project, and right. that's whether that you have to designate it. Basically, mm -hmm. it's everything would go through that as far as the application project uh, part of it. But uh, I know he did mention that you know the, a lot of the counties uh, they use county equipment to do part of the construction, the dirt work and stuff, and that that is reimbursed. I mean, they are reimbursed everything as, as part of that, and it's worked out pretty good for some counties, and and that that be something that he could explain better, you know, how that works. I remember you know, when we were talking about that, that was kind of an attractive point. Yeah, because and, but you got to have the time and the equipment to do it, but... Yeah. <laughs> But I think that's that's the main thing we came for is just, just to see if, if there is some interest or is absolutely no we're not we're yeah. not interested. In that's it. really why we're here because yeah. we need to go back to the city and say but, either yes they might consider it or we need you, to get together and talk more. Or you're going to have to go it alone. Yeah. 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 So. And then they can decide whether or not they want to go it alone, whether they want to do it or not. Yeah. Well, I feel we should move forward. Okay. I also feel that we should give the county, the city, George, or Carolyn. Mm -hmm. We all need to get together so we're all on the same page. I agree. And I think we should do it very quickly. Yeah. Well, we'll have to. Yeah, it's either that or we're going you know, to miss another year. And yeah. I asked her about state funding this morning. I said, I've, I've heard some horror stories about the state cutting all these programs, and she said, it's year by year. She said, right now we've got five million dollars of funding going ahead for the for the next year, and, and that's what they're getting ready to. I mean, maybe today, maybe they already award them today. I don't know. In July is when they they award them, and and she said, as far as we know, every, everything's going just like it was. So, but that's that could change any year. So, but. Uh, Anyway, that's basically what we wanted to know, and I don't know, we'll just have to try to... So you're on board at this point, and you're on board? Are you on board? Yeah. Okay. And I'll see it. We'll go back to the city council and report, you know, and we'll set things up for a meeting. Um, do what, we want to coordinate it with um, Nita yeah. of a day and a time? Probably. Would it be best? You know, I'm sure that we'll have to do it of an evening. Probably. Is that yeah, all right? That's probably the best. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what... Done yet, so. If nothing else, could we meet at the annex or sure, something? Sure. Okay. We we'll try to do that. I think she said he'd be back the fifteenth. Can you call and see if he can? If she's taking any uh, appointments for his schedule? Well, she was gonna uh, email him to have him contact me as soon as he got back. Okay. So, so Sounds good. We can, I think he's pretty flexible, so.
try to get something set up before the end of the month because that will just give us one more month to yeah. get, get our ducks in a row and get an application in and, and he could explain more about that, what what process from, from here forward. So. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Uh, it, right. Kim, just one more thought on you know, your, your question about Port Authority. Um, some of the Port Authorities that around here are like Port of Catoosa and there's a place up in, in North Dakota, South, South, South. but they're, they're, their revenue, it doesn't cost, I mean the, the Port Authority is, is not out any money because they have the tenants that pay the rent, which takes care of their, their expenditures. So it's, okay. a, I would say, so a self-funding uh, unit. But the Port Authority and the board, it just oversees the operation and, you know, the land portion. It's, a, it's all interesting because, you know, I was pretty involved with Agrex when Agrex, you know, the Mitsubishi company kept, came in, you know. Um, you know, that's another whole issue, you know, right. from where it was to what it is today and, you know, I but I mean so. the railway and Some all of that. Some of the port authorities, the land is not taxed, property tax, but the fixtures are. Hmm. Like Interesting. Well, whatever we can do to improve the quality of life or, or the, the options that we have in Stafford County is what we all need to be about. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, thank, thank you for your time. Nice. We'll get back to you. <coughs> I never lost one. You never did? 
doesn't want you spending. I spent ten thirty. I think I got five. But there were eight and ten footers. They were pretty big. I lost one. I'll get a point of me. Anyway, so we're asking for the same as the past on the under height. Asking for any more. Are we breaking? Where's that? First proposed. Proposed. One six one. Okay. And last year it was. make one. Yeah, interest rates. <laughs> 
That's not depressing. Now that's not good news there, is it? No. So, so anyway. No, there's nothing to read about. No, there really isn't. It's just not a good time. It'll come back eventually, maybe, in a few years. Yeah, wow. You guys have any questions for me? I know the department had a meeting this next week. I will not be here. So I didn't know if you had any questions for me beforehand. What kind of input are you looking for? <coughs> no, nothing. nothing. And just, it's something, you know, that we've been wanting to do. I know. And, you know, we do one and then forget yeah. about it. So. I had an unexpected situation from myself. I might not be I might be able to squeak and then they go. There you go. It, no, it's just. Okay, well, I sure thought if you wanted me to put anything yeah, together I, for you, I, I'd sure do what I could. Yeah. Okay. Just it's just yeah. something just that we okay. should be doing. And First step. And yes. Just, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. You can send me that, but yeah, I'll send it on if you okay. have anything you want to bring up. Thank you. Thanks. Can you take care of your radio? Huh? You want me to take care of your radio? Can you hold it for me? Yeah. That way I don't forget it. Don't forget it. Sure, I will. Might as well leave it on top. <laughs> I should. Okay. Our numbers have significantly increased this month. We had 29 accounts that we had. Um, in the amount of 20760 A lot of these Medicare has already paid on. The rest are just pinning Blue Cross Blue Shield. The ones out to the side on the split, those are actually secondary insurance waiting for Blue Cross to, to pay. I think one of them is United. The rest of them is Blue Cross. Um, we've had one self-pay account that actually paid in full. The other two is actually two runs on the same patient that I'm kind of concerned about. That I don't really so anyway, um, I'll look for that. <laughs> but anyway, um, everything else looks like it's um, paying pretty well. We actually collected twenty-one thousand dollars for this month. Twenty-one thousand two hundred fifty-five ninety-two. What's your breakout spy? Thirty to zero to thirty, sixty, thirty to sixty, sixty to ninety, and over ninety look like the aging yeah. and the accounts. Um, I actually haven't looked at that, okay. um, but I can get you guys a report for that if you'd like to see it. Oh, next time you come, it'd be nice to see that, just okay. to see how we're improving on, sure. on some of that. Okay. I'll do that. Um, that's actually the the report that I was telling you about that I've been using to go back and research the things that uh -huh. haven't paid. Um, it's still it's all it is is a find report and it uh -huh. says the aging of the accounts and I think that's really working because it's really we're going back and we're catching this stuff that's not crossing over uh -huh. and it's it's actually significantly increased our collections, I think. So. Good. Good. Keep busy. Any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> we were slammed the other day. I was like, wow, but it's, yeah, How's it's your, good. Uh, weekend people working out? Our house up working for you? We, um, one of them, his name is um, Sean, Sean Hayes, actually accepted a full-time position over uh, in Cedric County, the guy from Stafford. So we actually lost him <coughs> in the 23rd, but we did hire a new one in named Blake that is from Great Wind Fire that we're testing the waters with. Uh, and George is still, um, She's improving on her skill levels, and she'll be starting the full time or the uh, weekend stipend. Uh, so just getting her comfortable with the whole um, process is what we're after, and she's doing really well. So, but Blake will be starting. He's got three days this month, and he's only taking twelve-hour shifts in the beginning, so that we can test him out and see how uh, he's going to do. Yeah. And then, yeah, he seems to be a pretty good fit. So, yeah. but that's all we've got for right now. Yeah, so from staff. No, he's actually from Great Bend. So he worked beside Sean Hayes, um, was his partner, is why we actually grabbed the hold of him. So Dr. Farmer's um, been in on that deal too. So yeah. Yeah. But that's all we've got for so far. So 
we don't want to get too many people. And like I said, they didn't want a revolving door, um, but we did need at least one other person in here. So we just recruited him last week. <laughs> so it's been interesting. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Uh, Let's see if it works. I got it. Right over my head. Do you want to talk about the holes now or wait until everybody else is done? We've got 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Several departments of it. You remember when Dina was wanting her and the clerk and the treasurer's office to be able to transfer that money into the, the fund so they could use yeah. it? Oh, yeah, I right. think Noxious Meat is one of those that have has one of those funds. Okay. That would be a question mark. Yeah, I just, I just don't see why that was presented any different than the rest of that. Well, I'm supposed to be going to get to use. I'm going to come read that right. Uh, it transferred out that much. So we request that last this year. That's the right thing to do. Yeah, I'm probably looking for the kids. But I've got it. Wasn't he one of the first one? Didn't know about the plant got all mixed up. Transfer out this one to you on the um, six zero zero two. I honestly don't. That's just it. What that line item is is for okay. transfers. Oh, okay. You don't know where uh -huh. the button or where that where you put it. I don't like that. I don't like the guys who know the transfer. That money out. It's kind of hard to say. I don't think it's right that they hoard that money, taxpayer <laughs> money, for a capital purchase. I think it should be budgeted year by year. I said we got hit with a big ticket item if they didn't get the money to something. Well, well they've got, right? they got, I mean, they have accounts for that. And that's what I told them. We've you always handled them. Right. Understand. I just, I don't like them being able to do that. I mean, I don't even like when I read, when I, you know, when there's money left over. I wish it was just come out of zero every year, but it does, uh, unfortunately. Okay, go ahead. Come on. Okay. Don't sit down. Yeah. <laughs> well, after the last commissioner's meeting, when we talked about a vehicle, we made some phone calls, and I think we found a really good deal. Good. That's a 2005 Chevrolet Trailblazer. Dunes has it. It's got 64,643 miles on it, and they're wanting $8,500 for it. 
since Tom Fisher's wife works there, they kind of sit in the back a lot <laughs> so you guys could look at them because we knew we had a time to go. But, you know, something used like that, it's probably the cheapest thing we're going to call it. Uh, Four-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they brought it down, and Devin and I took it out and drove it. I mean, it's clean. It belonged to their detail manager's wife. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. it's like brand new on the inside. Yeah. And it won't have the chrome wheels on it. No. <laughs> the owner still had the factory wheels, but not 75% on the tires. So. Oh, man. <laughs> I thought, can we just put some chassis lights on yeah. here and try now on the ground? <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, I thought for that kind of money, we're well, not going to do any better. What would you use that for? Well, it's going to be probably another, because I, like I told you guys, it doesn't need to be at my place. Uh -huh. It'll be over here. And we're going to put a laptop computer because I have a computer stand already. I think we can modify it. So it'll have all the fire software and emergency management software in it. And so, like when he reports to fires, they have what they call a 209 formula, I remember, that he has to do for the state fire marshal. So you know, that way he can drive it. He can sit there and key all that in right there. It can also be a backup ALS unit, you know. So, because I noticed over in Stafford when I'm on by myself, you know, if I had Misty come over there to one of the other EMT techs, and then there's a second call. You know, both vehicles parked in Stafford and no techs. So that way, if you have another tech over here, you know, it could be used for that too. So it's kind of be, I, the way I consider it, could be used for all three departments. I could tell Davin if that's the case, and each department takes the gas when they fill it up. Because, you know, my budget doesn't have a large item, you know, for fuel and stuff like that. So it's being used for fire, fire can pay for it. And it's going to carry all my maps and everything in it and the, the command boards. I don't know if that is like when that tornado, hopefully we don't have that happening yet. Yeah. When that tornado came through two years ago, I was out for two weeks doing baby just as, uh, you know, from sun up to sun down. Then FEMA comes out, you have to take FEMA representative around and show them everything. And it's very common. Yeah. But that's my idea of sport anyhow. So I'm thinking it can be used for all three departments. And you got room in your budget this yep. year's. Yeah. Next year or this year's? This, this year's. year's. And then the radio issue is not going to be a problem except for 800. And you know, that's about our only way to communicate with other counties. I know the last time when Stafford County had some fire units respond to Reno County, Tom Fisher ended up being over there at their command post because he could talk to Stafford County units and he could talk to that Reno County on 800. You won't believe what 800 radios cost. <laughs> Luckily, most of the ones Stafford County's gotten so far, you know, it's been on grants. Because an 800 unit is $3,136.63. Wow. It's crazy, isn't it? But, you know, back when I started on the Sheriff's Department back in the 80s, everything was low band. What they call, you know, 39.58, and that's what everybody had. Everybody could talk to everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's going to 800, and, you know, I can sit out here on a handheld radio in Stafford County and talk to somebody in downtown Kansas City if I need to. I mean, it just works statewide. When we were coming back with that flight, I mean, I broke down. Tom actually was the 800 radio from just outside of me. And I called back here to work with that. I didn't advise that county that that drug was going to be sitting there. <laughs> so you need that so radio for that handheld? No, no, this is a mobile mount. Okay. I had handheld. So you need it for this week? Yes. Yeah. The other radios we're, we're okay on, we can make work, but then it would have all the equipment we need because we already have a laptop computer. So I think we're pretty, I mean, it'd be little stuff, light siren, little things like that, but these would be the only big items. It's crazy to pay that much for a radio, isn't it? Yeah. It just, it just <laughs> compared to the truck, that's, that's Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> it's just totally crazy. But, you know, it's a state controlled radio system. You know, the state has to know which vehicle it's going in because if somebody screws up on an 800 radio, the state of Kansas can tell you who it is. Yeah. <laughs> they know exactly whose vehicle that radio is in. So that's just part of the system. Yeah. So is there any warranty on this? 30 days? Or Probably 30 right? days. It has the inline six cylinder. It's the inline six cylinder. I have one identical to it, same year, everything sitting downstairs because I bought a secondary one for my wife, used for four wheel drive to get to and from work in the wintertime. It's got 140,000 and it drives down the highway perfect. I mean, so it was in line six on the return a long time. 
Are you okay with this? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'll make the motion we go ahead and purchase the uh, 2005 Trail Blazer for Stafford County Emergency Management. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second for emergency management to purchase the 2005 Chevy Trail Blazer for $8,500. All in favor say aye. Aye. So this radio, who's this from? The state? Motorola. Motorola. That's from Motorola. Motorola and Great Bend, or just Motorola in general? Well, mobile radio service. We talked. We called the Wichita place actually, and then he ended up getting transferred because it's such a specialized deal. He had to talk to what they finally got to the right person that he had to talk to. You know, because for all the ambulances, I think everything's been got received on a grant so far for the 800. Those are drying up, and I know the state of Kansas says don't ask for radios right now. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to allow any money to be spent for radios right now. But it's the coming thing, and I guess my recommendation is maybe every department's county needs to start budgeting a little bit for that because that's the coming system, and it's a very expensive system. I've actually already contacted the state because they'll allow you to go on the state system and give you banks and channels, and I've already requested to talk to the gal in Topeka because I'm going to see what it takes to get in line to get channels so we don't have to pay for the entire system. You know, we get on the state system. Because Barton County, I think, just received a top group of eight channels, and it didn't cost them a thing. I mean, they have to buy the radios, but then you're allowed to be on the system, and they give you eight channels to use. So I'm working on that right now to see if we can't get in on that deal too, so we don't have that expense in the future. Yeah, because I remember a couple of years ago, Butler County went the whole the whole system, mm -hmm. and I forget how many names. Uh, Reno <laughs> County went to it. You know, they went to yeah. 800. And I know just for District 6, which is Sylvia, just for their fire trucks and the handouts they got for their firefighters was 32000 And that's a tiny, tiny fire yeah. yeah. It's just very expensive. And that's one thing. Well, if we can take the steps, you know, get the top groups. You know, and we do have radios and ambulances. I have one in my police vehicle in Stafford. I'm getting ready to buy a second one for another police vehicle in Stafford. Uh, all the sheriff, well, two sheriff's officers have one in it. We have one at EOC. One in that fire Tahoe. I think that's it. And one in dispatch, of course. Can I make the motion that we allow EMS to buy this radio for thirty-one hundred and thirty-six dollars and sixty-three cents from Motorola? And second. Okay, we have a motion second to purchase the uh, radio from Motorola for $3,136.63 for the newly bought vehicle uh, <laughs> <laughs> for EM. All in favor say aye. 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 Makes it sound terrible. <laughs> <laughs> all in one day. Yeah, all in one day. I can't promise you I can't see any expenses on that come back next so. okay. There's a little stuff, like I said, the lights and siren, but that's well I'm spending money. I believe that's all I have right now. Very good. Let's see the treasures. I give her a bunch of fire. So, not many fires in the last week or two. Yeah, I'm on wood. That might help. Yeah. Moisture's been nice. I can take a step over the piece of salt. Yeah, if you don't get out there, though, you'd probably be stuck all the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. We had we had one um, here a while back over by Maxville. That was kind of a free field, but it's somewhere gone down the road. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
that's what originally they wanted to do. Yeah. before that. What, two five mils? How much would that be? Twenty-one thousand. Twenty-one thousand. Yeah, that's what they wanted to do. See what the extension council, what we did, what their actual was in 2013. I don't remember how much more we gave them last year. We had an increase last year. Okay. I think it was about I'm just that same amount. Maybe a little bit more. I don't mind giving them one little bit, but I don't think it's right. years is left in the hospital. No fun one paying it two more years. I think so. Yeah. 
did they ask last year they asked for six hundred thousand. Well it's more than that. Uh, no, that was six hundred six hundred. Well we gave them ten thousand dollars more. Yeah. Yeah. This is for their office help, not for their the directors. Office help didn't. I had Selena before I didn't. Right. I didn't think I ever got cheaper. Well, I think that's what they want to increase this next year. Just my general impression when I went to that meeting was I thought we ought to increase it, but maybe not to what they want to think, three or four thousand. I thought there was just a dab of cushion built in there. Right. I, I do remember thinking that that's one that we probably ought to increase, but not as much, quite as much as they want. But it's still not talking a big ticket right in there. So you say half that? I think four, I'd say four. 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 Be. That was my thoughts when I. So to make this 140, uh, 737.
firefighters' equipment. Uh, they're asking for ten thousand for to start building or replacing the fire equipment here. I think down here it says wildland gear. They had 23,000 in actual expenses in 2013. The budget was for 10, so we're proposing 23 for uh, 2015. 
told me? Not for the last. That's 33,000. Well, she wants an increase in for all of her employees. I think that's what she's got to build in there for all of them. That's what this doesn't have to do. Yeah, I know. Because what we need to do is show her that this call. What do you say? Yeah. Are you having any luck? No. I mean, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. Oh. If I, she can first. Well, that's fascinating. Yeah. 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 Well, that's too much. That's too much money. Most of these are down. Eight percent. Keep in mind, we knew two of those last year. And I don't think it's right in both of them. But it, there's, there's job responsibilities, I understand that, but there's, <clears throat> there's one person in this room. Yeah. It doesn't pay for the budgets, in my opinion. Well, I know that the scale's been Somehow to get 
you know, some reserves about that. But the thing, you know, it boils down to is whether we have sick people. You know, and it's really, uh, you know, they're out promoting good health and all that, but yet, you know, we need people occupying hospital beds. And they did. Uh, what did you say? The, the PT department has increased to where they hire another. Yeah. You know, and you, you're looking at those people, 20, 22, 24 dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something where there's a little bit of hope to people could use that for yeah. And they do. Yeah. The yeah. physical therapy <clears throat> numbers and the lab numbers are terrific. <laughs> but it just don't support the, yeah. the part that it's not being utilized. Well, you look at you know, the percentage of wages compared to expenditures and it's yeah. totally disproportionate. I'm getting more inclined getting more here than up here. Well, I think that's probably not already knocked down. And then as far as um, Well, this one's the one that started it all. Mm -hmm. And there was major changes in both of those offices last year. Mm -hmm. not that much. And a lot of these are going to come up between a rock and a hard place. What about the And you know, it's like these, uh, all these outside agencies that were supporting SDI and Sunflower and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. You know, they're counting to the north. Uh, no, that, that bothers me. That yeah. really bothers me. I think as far as, you know, I, I would be uh, reluctant to, especially with the childhood intervention. I think that's money well spent. You know, on the adult side, basically too late. I thought we could force <coughs> them to pay their fair share by reducing the values and do that, but I'm afraid that they just have to operate on rights. I wouldn't be so to change this one to sort of 20, you know, to reduce these both. I still think that 
really do it when you're buying birds now, you have to make a bond stuff. We're losing people that are uh, living in Burton. But it is a good service. It is a good service, but and I don't mind paying our fair share, but I don't want to be foot, yeah. foot in the hole. Especially when Barton, Barton. when Barton County is, has been re and, and they've stated their position on, on that. I mean, <laughs> and getting all the benefits. Yes, Would SDSI be the same as Sunflower as far as being as unfair, disproportionate? I don't remember what it was. Um, I'm not sure it is. But I think it was. I think it, it was. was. I think so. I'm not, I don't want to check that one out here. What's that? Yeah. SDI. <clears throat> Sunflower does more with the preschoolers. Well, I tell you, with some of these changes, though, I mean, those are going to add up pretty quick. I mean, we do have quite a few losses, but...
I would have went ahead and uh, had a piece together and seen how that came out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can. It's a big one. Twenty-four. I remember changing that to twenty-two. <laughs> remember, I remember changing that in the meeting to twenty-two. And they asked for that, so that should be twenty-four. Because they had us change this. It's the numbers. Same with the fire. <laughs> I wonder if she turned. Same with the fire. She has got her numbers. She turned more. Ten thousand. Oh more. yeah. <laughs> you think the twenty-eight thousand figure is actually right, or it should be twenty-four thousand? Well, I marked that in the meeting when we brought it. If they wanted twenty-two. That's just the wrong number. Well, twenty-two said. plus two and twenty-four. There's a budget change. That was an insurance cost. Would be the change of our
actually reduce the amount of dollars that are being spent in med that are being spent in Medicaid because you don't have duplicated lab tests and physicians not talking to each other and all of those kinds of things. So it is specific to the Medicaid population and in the state of Kansas they decided that the seriously mentally ill would be the very first population that they would look at providing this coordination of care because uh, for a number of reasons. First of all, those individuals die 25 years younger than the average population. And two, a small percentage of the population eats up a huge portion of the Medicaid budget because they typically don't have primary care, so emergency rooms are used for primary care. Um, they often don't understand their treatment, so the uh, adherence to treatment is not very good. A lot of diabetes, smoking, cardiac disease, and all those kinds of things within our population. So. They're looking to the mental health centers to really be one of the uh, entities, because we're a statewide network, that can really get in there and start coordinating this care and bring down those physical health care costs for the series of mental This is, um, the state's also going to look at chronic conditions as a health home uh, population as well. That would be individuals with diabetes and asthma. And then they'll be expanding it from there, um, what Kansas is going to choose to do beyond these two populations, we're not really sure. But this goes live uh, yesterday. So <laughs> um, we've really geared up to uh, provide this type of care. So if in our budget packet, you'll notice on page three um, that it has our health home budget. We are looking at this as a, as a separate um, entity from the Center for Counseling. Um, well, not an entity, but a separate program. It'll be the Center for Health and Wellness. And I want to uh, comment that this budget was put together when the state was giving us numbers of how many people need to be served and how many people would potentially be 
um, providing this type of service. Well, since we got that information, the whole world kind of changed. Um, so this is actually um, highly overstated um, compared to what's happening today in actual implementation. A couple of things have happened. One is that um, there are a number of healthcare individuals that are wanting to be health home providers. So for example, Rosewood, Sunflower, the DD population or uh, providers, as well as part of Kansas, the Federally Qualified Health Clinic are all getting into this type of business to be health home providers. And that's a good thing in that it gives clients choice. Um, and it really, I think competition in the market is a good thing because we all have to be on our game. Um, but anyway, that's going to reduce the number of people that we anticipate seeing because they will have their clients as well. The other thing is that the state um, had grand visions for this initiative and then weren't really ready. So um, you know that's a little surprising. Um, so they've delayed the chronic conditions, the um, diabetes and asthma populations until January. So this is um, really um, overstated and in um, an effort to, um, well, and a need to be fiscally responsible, we have not um, followed through and initiated this level of program. So we've hired fewer staff than we needed uh, or that we anticipated needing. And also the, um, all of this is being paid for out of the can care, managed care budgets, those three MCOs. And they're also, um, in, in regard to the revenue, they're um, also taking their cut, which is reducing the amount of uh, revenue that's available to people actually providing the service. So while we still think this is going to be a positive thing for our consumers, and we think it's something that we can actually do and implement successfully, it will not be to this degree here. So I wanted to make, make you aware that yeah, the state's made several changes since we submitted this. So. Um, Talia Schwartz is our person who is going to be overseeing that project. Um, we're super fortunate at the Center for Counseling in that uh, she was already working with the SMI population, SPMI, and she was a director of adult services. She also happens to have a master's degree in healthcare administration, so that worked nicely with the health home stuff. Um, but we do believe it will be a savings for the state um, in the long run. But this budget is submitted separately from the center's budget because we don't know that this is actually how it's going to play out. Um, so many factors can change. But we just wanted to let you know that we were putting some effort into that and that's what it's about. So the budget that we're submitting for you, um, to you for approval um, starts on page 7. Um, we understand that um, and recognize that in the state there is, continues to be some budget concerns and that a lot of um, responsibility has been passed from the state to the counties, making that not so easy to manage. Um, so we are requesting the same budget um, um, from you or the same um, input from you as we have in the last several years, going to hold in mind with our services. Um, we're continuing to really reach out to the residents of Stafford County and be able to provide them with an adequate level of service and make sure that their needs are met. Per population, we're actually seeing a few more clients that we have in years past. Um, that I don't believe that's due to more prevalence of um, conditions or mental illness. I think it's due to our efforts to actually make sure we're meeting the needs that are already here. Um, so that's part of that. So the amount that we're requesting is $19,096. That's listed on line four of page seven there in the budget. We don't have a significant change in the amount of expenditures per line item than we have in years past. We're, we're pretty well holding in line with that. Um, and fortunately, um, we made some changes years ago to go into the state health insurance plan and things like that to manage our costs more effectively, and that's actually worked out pretty good. Compared to the private sector, the state plan is held pretty consistent, so that's helped a lot in managing some of our employee costs. Um, on page uh, 10 of this uh, packet here, um, in red it lists some of the programs that we had discontinued in years past due to loss of funding from the state. Um, but if you'll notice in blue, um, there are a couple programs that we are reestablishing. One is a crisis program, and that actually got established in July of last year, and it's been wonderfully successful. We've had 20 clients that we referred to our crisis house that did not go to the state hospital as a result of having that brief short-term intervention. So that's really also helping to hold the state costs down. And um, that leads me to the graph that I also handed out to you today. 
the state hospital numbers continue to be a hot, hot topic um, at the state level. And this graph shows um, in blue are, is the funding that the community mental health center system has had since, 19, or since 2005. And you can see the significant drop and loss of you know, about $10 million or more um, over the last several years. At the same time, the line in green shows what happened to the clients in the state hospital numbers. So really, you can see that the loss of state funding is really translated to the increase in patients at the state hospital. However, a lot of our um, state decision makers don't really seem to understand this correlation here. Um, but the state hospital has been typically running about 20 people over census, which is not, not a good situation. So we're doing, as a system of mental health centers, we're doing everything we can to try to find alternatives, and our crisis house would be one of those. So like I said, we had 20 people were diverted. They would have gone to the state hospital, but we were able to care for them in the community and have them um, contribute to that over census. So there's that, there's that information. But that crisis house was um, initiated in July of last year. All 20 residents um, or, or admissions that we had were successful. And another thing that we're going to be reinitiating is substance abuse treatment. We had dropped that in 2008 just because we could not continue to afford that. It's no more lucrative today than it was in 2008. However, um, the need is so great in finding any type of substance abuse treatment in, in our four county catchment area is really difficult. So um, we recognize that need and as we're talking about integrated care, you can't ignore a particular issue and expect someone to get better. So we're re um, we just received our license for that. We're in the process, process of uh, writing policies, procedures, and hiring. Um, we have one staff person approved in our budget to, um, to fill that and to get started. And then we'll expand that as the need arises. So that's something that is new for um, this fiscal year. We, over the last year, we've had um, a, a slight decrease in um, um, numbers that have been served compared to the year before, but I think that that's just kind of an ebb and flow because the numbers are rising again. Um, so I think that overall, it's we're maintaining pretty consistent levels of, of uh, what we're trying to provide to all the, the constituents of the, the four counties that we serve. I know I talk pretty quickly. <laughs> Questions about any of that? I like the children. Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Everybody has a provider on the list. That tells you a lot more information. Well, usually you like pages and people. Yeah. <coughs> you know. We track our level of service pretty um, pretty closely because we have productivity standards. Again, um, you know, as any business, and I think social services is kind of um, slower in coming on the board of, of regular business and managed care, but the reality is that you got to be efficient with the resources that you have. So we, uh, right, we monthly um, monitor the client outcomes. Is what we're doing actually successful? And are the people that we're uh, employing actually productive in what they're doing? So we monitor that really closely, and um, therefore it's, it gives us the ability to provide you with this level of information about who we're serving, how we're serving, and so forth. Um, so we are one of the things I would also like to mention is that we still have two open positions for our board from Stafford <laughs> County. Um, you may hear that from some of the other people. Gracie McNichol is, is currently yes. serving, and she's doing an amazing job. I, I really enjoy her. She's an excellent board member. She's very involved. She asks good questions. Um, she attends, uh, she's, uh, most of the time, she rarely misses. Um, the challenge that we run into is that for some reason she can't be there, then there's no representation from Sackville County. And then often we don't have a quorum and, and can't meet as board. So we could really use some. Two more, you said. Two more. Mm -hmm. At least one. One would be good. <laughs> yeah. um, they meet on the third Thursday of the month. We do. And if we don't have if we don't have a lot of business um, that really requires board action, we don't meet for the sake of meeting. Right. So if there's really not a lot to discuss, we will cancel that month's meeting so that people aren't making a trip for to just meet and have a good
cajita. <laughs> but we're super pleased with uh, Gracie's um, you know, performance, her leadership, and, and her input as, as a board member. She's done a great job. Um, it, with the exception of children and adult, right. so those would be separated. Yeah. But all of the children and adult services are also included in the center's overall numbers. Right. You know, so. so a lot of these numbers fluctuate, but they still can be probably the same people, just a different category. Exactly, exactly. And um, from year to year, for example, <coughs> some of our kids may you know age out and move to adult services, so they just move to a different category. But we've really made a lot of effort. Um, one of the things we continue, as, as most rural areas do, is struggling with transportation. Um, I also serve on the Governor's Planning Council for um, Rural and uh, Frontier Care. And we are hosting a legislative luncheon on the 27th of July to really make sure that our legislators understand that living in a rural area is different and that resources that are intended for rural areas need to come to rural areas and really address primarily transportation and how difficult it is for residents to get to specialized care or other services that they need. So that that tends to be a barrier for all kinds of services and um, our state needs to recognize that. So Where is that? That's going to um, that's going to be in Dodge City uh, or Garden City, and I'd be happy to uh, give you more information. You're welcome to come. We'd like to have as many decision makers as we another meeting. <laughs> um, I'll just make sure it's on the legislators. <laughs> that would be great. So um, can I send you the information? Sure. I'll be sending invitations to them as well. Do you have an email address or? Yeah. But as much support as we can to get our. Um, decision makers and policy makers that are used to happen. It does seem to be that um, many initiatives are population based, so that's where the dollars tend to go. And I'm a big advocate of saying, hey, we count too. Yeah. <laughs> we matter too. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for that. Okay. <laughs>
so the school system has to kick in uh, since they can't provide that to us. Well, that tells you that. Yeah. Yeah. what the middle way is. Right. I mean, each county is supported. I mean, yeah. that's all. So, a lot better deal for us than the others, yeah. Center for Counseling is not on this list, correct? I don't think so. No. Do you have that? That's what you got just for having this call button. Yeah, that's so just this call button. You just need that back call button. So turn it on the back. Uh, that would be right because that would be the actual numbers, not the total. Okay, well, you need to add it. That's yeah. subtracted from the different parts. Right. Yeah. So maybe this one.
Jesus. <laughs> As we have our numbers now, this is what they asked for. Mm -hmm. This is where we got it to. Mm -hmm. This is the less that they asked less for. Mm -hmm. That's what after adding those two, the twenty thousand. Uh, the total requested. Those two were the 
these it's two sides were in the this column the total the mores and all that stuff. And then this is that for you to change. Because just to give them time to run we have the election. Yeah. We've got primary coming up. Yeah. Um